what I told you to describe Miss Jerkins' actions that day. Oh, she just stormed out. And uh, how would you describe that? I'd say nuts. She just went nuts. We're going to get into our gear, our head, our head gear and our clothing. Now, we didn't use these too often in grade 9, but in order to find Big Turpin, we're going to have to use them readily and often. This here is an agenda. What we're going to do is we're going to record our whereabouts and what we find out about Big Turpin on our journey. Here are some things she asked us to record before she went crazy. Take a high moment test. This could give us clues as to where she is or the method she's using to elude us. Ready for take your kid to work day. She could have used this as a ploy to get us out of the classroom in order to go or prepare for her going nuts. Last but not least, final exams on Thursday. What will happen on Thursday? She can no longer talk, only read or write. At a very advanced level. That means we're going to have to leave her a note. Alex, hand me my strength and struggle sheet. We write this thing correctly, because she's very advanced. There you go, Josh. Keep my writing neat, otherwise she can't read it. And she and may, may go mad. I need to close off my paragraphs, or she won't understand topic change, and she I need to make certain letter capitals, or she won't know when new sentences begins. Let's keep going. Wait. Look at this. She's organized her idea diagram. Not that organized, if it was left on the ground. We're getting close to the beast. I have a feeling we will be finding her very, very soon. Conditions are unfamiliar and harsh here. She is leaving us clues to antagonize us. Look at this short story she made us do. It's disturbing and sickening. At the same time, I can see how the protagonist is the character whom we identify the most. The person who has the conflict, and whose conflict is resolved at the climax. I can see also how the antagonist is the person, thing of force working against the our protagonist. And how a flat character is an undeveloped character. Then there's plot, which it's what happens in the story. It is also driven by the conflict and it's expressed to one clear sense. The element of my choice would be the tone. Sure, it's the attitude adopted by the narrator and will be conveyed through sentences and patterns, not to mention the literary devices, but still, sickening. Some more about the short story, theme. The theme is the truth about life the author wants us to learn or think about. Theme is implied versus explicit, which means it's stated. We derive theme by reading between the lines and asking what happened to the protagonist at the climax, or by considering the title. Point of view. First person point of view is when the events in the story directly happen to the narrator. This view coins the third person point of view, First, it's omniscient. The narrator is all-knowing. The narrator knows the thoughts and feelings of any character and can make inferences and relate to past events and move from location to location. Limited omniscient. The narrator is limited to be for only one character. The story told through the character, i.e. Gordy the Chance in The Body. In the heart of the habitat, there's no looking back now. We didn't search for Big Turpin, and look what we found. She's revised her first draft. This is big. Quick, quick. Come over here, come over here. We found a very small shoe. It either belongs to Big Turpin, or a very gay man. Josh, Josh. What? Oh, my. Hold on to my agenda. And my spoon. What did you find? Crikey, it's a poem. This could be huge. This could be huge. Listen, very little shoe. You can never find me in the bush. That's a haiku. If one type of poem, a free verse. Look, there's another poem. It's a sonnet. 
It's eight line stanzas, and it has a lot of alliteration, which is a repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of a word. Not to mention the vast amount of personification, giving human qualities to a non-human thing. Flop. Pardon me. That's onomatopoeia. Crikey. Look! She's left us a final draft. She's published it. It's a letter of compliment or complaint. It's a complaint! I'm tired of you following me around. There's more. A letter, a letter of complaint or compliment is an important skill because it's a non-verbal way of expressing yourself. There's more. And because you might need it someday. She did state the point, which is important, and it was detailed. And it even says what should be done in the future. Look at that letter of compliment or complaint. Her writing is atrocious. You know why that is, don't you? I certainly do. No dictionaries. Precisely. A dictionary is important because you have to know how things are spelled and the origins of certain words. Too right, you. I have a fun idea. Let's do a word hunt. Yes. Fun. What happened to your accent? I don't know. Look at her litter of complimentary complaint. There's tons of words to do a word hunt for. Deccan? You know what? That's on page 305 of the dictionary. And you know what? Do you know what? That is of Greek origin. Wow. Look at this. Aquafortis. It is on page 55 of the dictionary. And it is from Latin origin. Crikey! Oh my. Look at this word. Len. Page 121 of the dictionary. Middle English origin. She's been feasting. It smells like school. What's We're that? Getting close. Oh, what's that? It's a shelter. We found Big Turpin! We found Big Turpin! I think we found Big Turpin. I think we found her. Come on, come on. Oh. It's just a highway and a bunch of trucks. Let's go. Smell that. It smells like school. Oh my god, look. We found Big Turpin. Let's go, go, go. Come on. All right, Big Turpin. Oh. She's making a war cry. All right, Big Turpin, when can I battle you? Oh. Remember, she can't talk. I had corners. Thank you for the politeness. Turpin headquarters. One thing I'm worried about is before the battle she asks us to do a speech. speaking skills, she won't take us seriously. What we need to do, we need to make cue cards to organise our speech. And... Material that we can remember. Crikey! Alex, remember to speak clearly, to stay still, and stand up straight. Don't rock back and forth. Make eye contact. Oh, we went all the way from the outback in Australia to Tubin headquarters. 
think these two have been sitting here. Wait a minute. Let's walk. Come over here. There seems to be some sort of test. Important things about tests that everyone needs to realise. First, when you're taking a test, you have to think like the teacher. And number two, never leave an answer blank, even if you're just guessing. Oh my God, crikey! This test is about Shakespeare. I know two important things about Shakespeare are, is that they often speak in English accents, that they often wear tights over their legs, the men. Now, an important thing about learning Shakespeare is that some of the words originate from old languages, such as Latin or Old English. That way, when you don't understand some of it, it's not your fault. Hmm. Let's do this. It's been dealt with. This kid Ryan and the kid uh, Daniel, uh, they're just knocking through there. You ask them to do stuff, and they just, they're talking to each other, and they're just floating around. Well, you're, you're two boys having a move. I've already made up my mind on that score.